there is considerable interest in the use of uh, CAF-20 for CO2 capture applications. The uh, development of CAF-20, CAF which stands for Calgary Framework 20, is described in the paper by Shimizu and co-authors, published in Science in 2021. My focus today is on competitive uh, absorption of mixtures of CO2 and water in uh, structured CAF-20 that contains 20% uh, polysulfone. The mixture absorption data is shown in this uh, figure taken from the uh, science paper. The uh, experiments are carried out at 295 Kelvin at a total pressure of 97 kilopascals and the uh, component loadings of CO2 shown by the red triangles and uh, water shown by the uh, blue circles is plotted as a function of percentage relative humidity. I wish to uh, compare the data on competitive CO2 water mixture absorption with the estimations of uh, the ideal absorbed solution theory. Indeed, in uh, the PhD thesis of Nguyen, published in 9, 2021, Nguyen is also a co-author of the uh, science paper, the uh, comparison of the same set of experimental data with the IASD is presented. It is intriguing to note that the IASD is in extremely poor agreement with the experimental data and therefore it is of interest to see uh, um, the uh, reasons for the failure of the IASD. But my uh, focus today is on um, IASD calculations and uh, this case study of competitive CO2 water absorption in CAF-20 is uh, also a tutorial on IASD calculations. For background on the IASD theory and the uh, limitations thereof, I refer you to my paper in ACS Omega 2021. The uh, first step in the uh, IASD calculations of uh, CO2 water competitive absorption in CAF-20 is to uh, determine the urinary isotherm fits at a temperature of 295 Kelvin. The uh, urinary isotherm data for a variety of temperatures for both CO2 and water are provided in the science paper of Shimizu and co-workers. These data have been uh, refitted by Carr and Marshall from ExxonMobil and uh, the uh, fits have been uh, reported in terms of temperature dependent parameters. At a temperature of 295 Kelvin, the uh, fitted isotherm data are shown here, red for CO2, blue for uh, water. If we examine the uh, fitted isotherms provided by Carr and Marshall, we note that the uh, urinary isotherm data can be approximated to excellent accuracy using uh, 
the single site Langmuir model for uh, CO2 and the uh, Langmuir Freundlich model for water with a Freundlich exponent of 2. I will use my own isotherm fits for the IAST calculations that follow. The next step is to apply the theories enunciated by um, Josiah Willard Gibbs, Alan Myers, and John Prasnitz. The Gibbs absorption equation is uh, written here where A is the uh, specific surface area and pi is the uh, spreading pressure. Q sub i is the molar loading of component uh, I in the adsorbent and d mu i is the uh, gradient of the chemical potential of component I. The gradients of the chemical potential are related to the gradients of the partial fugacities in the bulk gas mixture. In the myers prausnitz theory, the partial fugacities are related to the uh, mole fractions of the components in the adsorbed phase by these quantities P10, which is the sorption pressure of component 1, and P2 sub superscript 0, which is the sorption pressure for component 2. These expressions are precisely analogous to the uh, um, Raoult's law for vapor-liquid equilibrium. The uh, spreading pressures may be evaluated by integration of uh, the uh, unary isotherms for component 1 and component 2. The uh, quantity pi times the uh, specific surface area divided by RT is also dubbed the surface potential. Now the uh, integrals may be evaluated analytically for a variety of unitary isotherm fits. I show here the integrations for the langmuir freundlich fits for components 1 and component 2. In view of the uh, expression asserted by uh, Myers and Prausnitz that F sub 1, which is the partial fugacity for component 1, is related to the uh, sorption pressure for component 1 times the uh, mole fraction in the adsorbed phase, we may replace the uh, sorption pressures for the expression F sub 1, which is the partial fugacity for component 1 in the bulk gas mixture divided by the mole fraction of component 1 in the adsorbed phase. Similarly, the uh, sorption pressure for component 2 may be uh, replaced by the uh, partial fugacity of component 2 in the uh, bulk gas mixture divided by uh, x2, which is 1 minus x1, because the sum of the mole fractions of the uh, absorbed phase mixture is unity. So, uh, the second step involves the solution of this implicit equation in the mole fraction of component 1, which in our case is CO2 in the adsorbed phase. All other parameters in this equation 
Q1 sat, which is the saturation capacity for component 1, the Freundlich exponent for component 1, which is CO2, happens to be unity. This B1 is the uh, Langmuir parameter for component 1. And here we have the saturation capacity for component 2, which is water. The <coughs> Freundlich exponent for component 2, which for water is determined to be 2. B2 is the uh, Langmuir parameter for water. There's only one unknown in this equation, and that is uh, x1. Let us uh, proceed further in solving this uh, implicit nonlinear equation. Further details are provided in my ACS Omega paper in 2021. See also my presentations on the IAST and the RAST on my YouTube channel. Step three in the uh, IAST calculation procedure is to solve the nonlinear equation to determine the mole fraction of component one, which is CO2, in the adsorbed phase. Let's see how that is done. Recall that we are trying to uh, compare the experimental data for the loadings of uh, CO2 and water in the mixture that is determined experimentally with predictions of, uh, the, C, um, of the IAST. In these experiments, the sum of the partial fugacities that may be taken to be equal to the sum of the partial uh, pressures equals uh, 97 kilopascals. And uh, in each of these experiments, the uh, relative humidity, percentage relative humidity has been uh, determined and uh, this state, the percentage relative humidity is the partial fugacity of water divided by the uh, saturation vapor pressure for water at 295 Kelvin times 100. So if the uh, percentage relative humidity is say 60, we can uh, calculate the partial fugacity of water in the bulk gas mixture by uh, using the Antoine equation for the saturation vapor pressure of water. Okay, so we know F1, F2, and uh, we need to solve this nonlinear equation to determine the uh, mole fraction of component one, which is CO2, in the adsorbed phase. There are many ways to solve this uh, nonlinear equation. Um, the easiest one, perhaps, is to use uh, the Excel solver. Indeed, uh, I uh, do most of my uh, IST calculations using um, Excel macros that involves the Excel solver. You may uh, be interested to learn that the Excel solver is very robust and reliable. Now for a range of values of uh, relative humidities, we can uh, determine F2. And uh, since the total pressure is known, we know F1 and we can calculate X1 as a function of percentage relative humidity. These calculations are shown by the uh, dashed lines here, where I used the Excel solver to determine uh, 
a small fraction of CO2 in the adsorbed phase. I compare the IAST with the experiment. Let's proceed further to determine the component loadings in the adsorbed phase after having calculated the mole fractions in the adsorbed phase. From step three, we know the uh, mole fraction of component one in the adsorbed phase, and therefore, since the mole fractions add to unity, we also know the uh, mole fraction of component two, water in our case, in the adsorbed phase. We are now in a position to determine the sorption pressures P10 and P20 of CO2 and water. To proceed further in determining the molar loadings in the adsorbed phase, we need to uh, make a further assumption. In the myers prausnitz theory, it is asserted that there is no change in the specific surface area of each molecule on mixture adsorption. This implies the uh, validity of the expression written here that the uh, specific surface area divided by the total molar loading Q sub T, which is Q sub 1 plus Q sub 2, equals the area that is uh, occupied by component 1 and the area that is occupied by component 2. And the area occupied by component 1 is this specific area A times the mole fraction of component 1 in the adsorbed phase divided by the uh, loading of component 1, which is uh, determinable from the unary isotherm fits using the sorption pressure of uh, component 1. Similarly, the area occupied by component 2 is uh, the specific area A times the mole fraction of component 2 in the absorbed phase, which is 1 minus x1, divided by the uh, molar loading of component 2. And the molar loading of component 2 is calculable from the unary isotherm fits using the uh, sorption pressure of component 2. So this expression allows you to calculate the total molar loadings because the unary isotherm fits are known and the sorption pressures of 1 and 2 are calculable from this expression. Once the total molar loading is known, the component loadings of component 1 and 2 are determinable from uh, these expressions, which is the total loading times the mole fraction in the adsorbed phase, and x1 and uh, x2 are available from the uh, step 3 described in the foregoing slide. The calculations of the component loadings as a function of uh, percentage humidity at a temperature of 295 Kelvin and 97 kilopascal total uh, pressure are shown here by the dashed lines. The uh, reasons for the uh, deviation 
of uh, the experimental data from the IAST is a subject of a separate discussion that will be taken up in a future presentation.